Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here, back again for another painting video. Hope you're having a fantastic day today. Today we are using a 12 by 12 inch canvas. I have a one inch chip brush. This is a very cheap, like a dollar brush you can get at a Lowe's or Home Depot. And I chose to use this type of brush today to show you that you don't need really fancy brushes to create a very beautiful looking painting. You can even use a basic, inexpensive, little cheap chip brush and get a fantastic result with it. Oftentimes it's the way you blend your colors, it's the composition that sells the painting, and you don't have to have the most fancy of equipment to create a nice looking piece of art. The one downside to using a chip brush like this is that sometimes some of the bristles will come off into the paint itself, so make sure that you pick those out if you are using an inexpensive brush like this. I wouldn't recommend necessarily using a brush like this, but it can create some nice looking effects, and if you're just trying out painting for the first time, I wanted to show you that it was possible. I'm starting today with some cobalt blue and some of the titanium white. As I'm coming down, I am starting with a mixture of the blue and the white, but I'm adding more white the farther down the canvas I get. I'm gonna cover the top two thirds of this canvas with the sky, adding more white as I do so. some more of the white, and I'm gently blending this together with long horizontal strokes. Again, keep an eye out for those stray hairs. They can come off that brush and can ruin the effect of the beautiful paint. There's one, picking it out now. Add a little more white to my brush and blend this out. Now I'm just going straight into the white with a dirty brush. No more blue. Another stray hair there, pulling that out. You can just flick them off and blend out. And that is the downside of using a chip brush. Continuing to blend this out here at the top. Just about ready to go into the next step. Going to be bringing in a lot of the white here at the bottom to create a misty, distant cloud bank. All right, taking some pure titanium white and I've cleaned my brush mostly off. I'm going to start here at the bottom left and have it rising very gently up to the right, keeping a very relaxed hand while I'm doing so. Gently blending upwards, trying not to lose some of the pure sections, but allowing the blue to trail in in a few spots. There we go, rising that upwards, blending that out a little bit, touch of the blue kind of behind it at the bottom, a little more white. We're not looking for a block of color here, so allow the paint to be mixing and mingling. It shouldn't be perfect coverage, you want it to be loose and messy. Okay, I'm taking a half inch brush, another chip brush, with some pure white, and I'm just tapping the bristles against the canvas. I'm 
just allow the bristles to do a lot of the work. We're just barely touching the bristles to the canvas, allowing it to just bounce and play. Starting here at the top left hand corner. And moving down until I reach that cloud bank below. These clouds are a little closer. They have a bit more detail and texture to them and some nice shimmering highlights. Notice that I'm not covering completely and I have spots that are a little more active and lighter and some spots that are darker. I'm allowing it to sort of play and take on a life of its own. There's some more clouds here, bouncing along, connecting down into that cloud bank below. We're going to do the same thing to the other side. Here I'm tapping and slightly dragging out these tendrils, nice and wispy clouds. Do note that I am not over blending this. I'm keeping it very active, the brushwork. I'm allowing the individual strokes to really zing across here. I'm just tapping. I'm allowing there to be variation. The tendency to make it all very uniform and perfect is not going to work with this painting. You have to keep it nice and loose. Just tap and allow the different shapes to emerge organically. If you try to draw them in by pressing and pulling, it's not going to be the right effect. You have to tap and keep it really relaxed. Okay, I'm going to bring in some more white up here with an almost dry brush, sort of blending upwards. Some very nice high, I believe that's what you call them, kind of faint and wispy, made out of ice, I believe, if I remember my physical science from high school. Again, I have very little paint on that brush. I have almost a dry brush. Back into the actual paint. Again, creating some variation in this cloud bank by tapping some highlights here and there, creating some rounded upside down U shapes, some hill shapes with these clouds because clouds have these sort of flowing, almost like rolling hill effect if you look at them. Okay, back into my cobalt blue, titanium white, and a touch of the cadmium yellow light. And this is going to be our mountain for our mountain view. We don't want to make this mountain too big. In fact, the smaller you make it, the better it will look, I think. So keep it small. I'm going to just drag this over right here in the center, leaving about, I don't know, an inch on each side of the canvas, not covered. A little darker mix. Now I'm not covering everything I just did, again with the darker, I'm just putting in a few spots. So let's add a touch more yellow to that. I'm trying to have the left hand side of this mountain is a little darker and then the right hand side is going to be a little lighter. I'm going to add some more white to my mix and bring in some more highlights and a few spots here along this mountain. Not covering up all the dark, just putting in some light here and there. And if you want it to be a little more vegetative, you can add a touch of the yellow to make a more green mountain. Don't overdo it though. It's still going to look mostly blue. Some more of the white, lightening up this right hand side where the mountain is facing to the right. I'm trying to think of it as a three dimensional object. Okay, I'm going to grab some of this cadmium yellow light. I want to add a quick note. This is a very bright light yellow. 
and for some reason my camera is not picking up that shade correctly. It looks like almost a primary yellow, a banana yellow, here on my camera. That is not the accurate color. It is a very light, very um, bright yellow, almost a neon yellow, and here it looks almost banana yellow. So just keep that in mind, when you're painting this painting, you should get a very spring green when we start to mix in the next step, the black. And on this painting, it looks a lot more muted on the camera. When you look at the final still, at the very end of this painting video, when I show you the final painting, the image, uh, the picture, I want you to note the difference in the color. I'm putting it on as an underpainting color, and then I'm taking a touch of the black here, and I'm going to start to put in a tree line. I'm using my one inch brush again, And I'm just tapping along the tops here with that mixture. I'm going to make it smaller so the mountain is visible here in the center. And then they can get larger again on the right hand side. But I really want the left hand trees to be the tallest. So we're going to make those nice and big. Okay. Adding a little more yellow to it as I go along. And over here on the other side. Again, I'm just tapping the bristles directly onto the canvas. Okay, let's add a touch more black to this mixture. Just a touch, a very little bit. Black is a very strong color. You only need a little bit. And at the bottom of each of these trees, we're going to tap in another line of trees. And it's going to be the shadow, kind of the underside of these trees. They're at a distance. And so we're going to tap them in here nicely, just in a few spots. Some shadows under these trees. Then I'm going to go the other way and grab some pure yellow with my dirty brush. So it's going to be still a little bit of black in there. And I'm going to create some highlights with this yellow. Now it doesn't look quite so drab. Again, the camera is not picking up the color perfectly. It looks a little bit too muted. In reality, that's a much more vibrant green going on underneath that yellow. Keep that in mind. Okay, a little more of the cadmium yellow and the Mars black. Get some more of that mid-tone mix going. Kind of in the middle. Nice olive green here you should be making. I'm going to do some diagonal strokes, pulling straight down from the tree line across from left to right. Nice diagonal strokes coming down. This is going to be a hill. And what's really wonderful about this method is because I put the yellow first, the underpainting first, where the brush is dragging and leaving breaks in the bristles, you're getting to see that nice warm yellow peering through underneath and it warms the whole thing up. It makes it look instantly interesting. Take the cadmium yellow light with my dirty brush. I'm going to bring some more yellow in a few spots, blending here, trying to blend together this to make it smoother. And just a few sections here and there, a little more yellow at the top here. Anywhere where I feel like there's going to be a lot of sunlight, I want to add more yellow and lighten up the section. For a little bit of color variation, I'm going to mix together the blue and the white with a touch of the cadmium yellow light. I'm using my half inch brush for this. And I'm going to create a nice bluish green. And in a few spots here, I'm going to bring in some variation to this field, this rolling hill. Lightly playing that blue through, varying the green. Here is some white and a touch of the yellow and the black mix. So I'm taking my olive green and putting some white into it. And I'm going to put some of this lighter white on the right hand side where the sun is striking directly. Because if you look outside at some grass, you'll see that total saturation of sunlight, where sunlight's directly hitting the grass, it actually kind of flares a white at the top. And so I'm going to simulate that by adding a little bit of this white here on the right hand side, 
which also adds some distance. We don't want to overdo it though, it's very easy to do so. So just a little bit of the white in just a few spots on the right hand side to create that illusion of space. Again with my darker mix of the olive green. A bit more of the black in there. Yeah, nice and dark. Don't overdo it though. Not black, just dark. Right at the top here, along this ridge line, I'm going to add some bushes. Thin line, basically. And over here on the other side as well. Gently tapping the bristles. I'm going to have it come down across this field, like so. And on that side, maybe another one up here at the top. That adds a little bit of structural line, simulate more of the hill coming down. Grabbing some of that pure cadmium yellow light. Felt like I needed some more highlights with the yellow here at the top. Emphasize that yellow. Again, this is a bit muted on the camera. It should be more vibrant and richer on your own canvas if you're painting along with me today. Some more of the yellow over here. Intermingling into the white that I put on earlier. Again, that's, that's just a subtle effect. We don't want to add too much of that white or we'll sort of wash out what we have. We want the colors to be pretty vibrant. Pretty vibrant. Okay, some more of the Mars Black and the Cadmium Yellow top of the ridge, following this top ridge line. Grabbing my bright brush, I'm going to take some white and add a touch of the cobalt blue to it, a touch. And here at the top, I had some of my mountain strands got a little wispy, and it wasn't a clean straight line at the top, so I'm going to fix that by adding a few indications of the white and adjust the angle of this mountain here on the right hand side. Back to my dark olive green mix, felt like it needed to have some more shadows on the right hand side over here in this line of trees in a few more spots, bringing in that darkness. A little too thick there on the left, so more of the yellow, and we're gonna cover that up. There we go, better. And don't forget to paint the sides of your canvas, and we're done.